If you can't let go, if you're so wrapped up in what's in that wrapping paper, you are missing the whole party. What is up, my fellow dreamers and soul searchers? Welcome to the Roxy Talks Manifestation Podcast, your raw, unfiltered, and unapologetic source for all things manifestation related. I'm Roxy Lee, and for the last decade, I have been researching and developing my signature 360 method, which combines behavioral science, quantum physics, and the law of attraction to help you manifest a life beyond your wildest dreams. Visit RoxyTalks.com for more info. Now, let's get into it. What is up, my fellow dreamers and soul searchers? Welcome to another episode of Roxy Talks, where we discuss confidence, mindset, manifestation, and more. I'm Roxy Lee. I'm a mindset coach, and I'm here to help you banish your negative thinking and limiting beliefs so you can bring love, clarity, and joy into your life. Now, last week, we talked about controlling and micromanaging your manifestations, like doing the most to try and and force the universe into submission, force your reality into submission. If that message resonates with you, make sure you listen to last week's episode because we're building off of those ideas in this episode because a lot of questions I get are about this nuanced area of persisting versus letting go. You know, a lot of the questions people are asking me, you know, do I persist or do I let go? I'm like, well, you, you do both. You have to let go of the need, let go of the force, like what we discussed last week, and persist in the Chilosaurus Rex vibes. Persist in the it's already here. Persist in the it's okay. Persist in the it's unfolding now. Persist in the I don't have to worry about that right now. I know that it's working out. And this is where the art is. This, it's the art of patience. It definitely is. That's a part of it. But it's, it's not just patience. It's patience and acceptance at the same time. It's, I'm patient and I'm so enjoying the patience process. I like where I'm at right now. And even though I'm in the process of patience, even though I'm in the unfolding moment, if you will, really, if I look around me, I'm actually living in an incredible manifestation already. All these moments that you're taking for granted and saying, what I want isn't here yet, or obsessing over making it happen. And manifestation and beauty and love and abundance is passing you by. It's everywhere around you. It's everywhere you look if you look for it. But when you're so wrapped up in what you're trying to get and what you're trying to create and what hasn't manifested yet and do I keep persisting or do I let go? I really want this thing and I want them to do it, but it's not working out. They want it. I know I can make it work out, but it's not going. Meanwhile, abundance is just like, <laughs> hey, <laughs> I'm here whenever you're, <laughs> whenever you're ready. We got love, we got abundance, we got joy, we got peace, we got contentment, we got satisfaction, but you got to look up from your manifestation doing, (laughs) not being, right, from last week. You got to look up from your book of trying to force things to happen, look away from the affirmations you're trying to force yourself to recite, which I know that I speak about it a lot. 360 Method is about reciting affirmations, but it's also about living and letting, allowing, trusting. Manifesting isn't just about the conceptualization process. It isn't just about the choosing. The getting is important, right? And we know the getting is important because that's probably why you're listening to this episode or watching it if you're 
watching the beautiful video on my website, roxytalks.com, where you can also find amazing courses, coaching, workshop, affirmations, meditations, and all kinds of fun stuff. Obviously, the getting portion of it is important. It's probably why you're here, but do you understand the art of getting? <laughs> I've talked about the art of allowing. We're going to call it the art of getting today because it's probably been six months and our brains need a refresher, right? We need to be reminded of things constantly. And that's why I tell you to recite the affirmations because I want you to convince yourself of your reality, but I don't want you to drive yourself crazy with it because part of the art of getting is knowing that you're going to get expecting that you're going to get and sitting back and waiting for it to come to you. I keep seeing in my mind like a little kid at a birthday party just like sitting back with their feet up like waiting for their presents to arrive and not in a mean or entitled way just like it's my birthday and my presents are coming and I can't wait to open my presents and I'm going to enjoy the clown and the pin the tail on the donkey and the punch and the cake because I know presents are coming and obviously I want my present, but I still really like the party. You know, the birthday party is still amazing and magical and wonderful. So look at your life as the birthday party and not just the presents that you're going to get. Because if you were that kid and all you were doing the whole birthday was like peeking in bags and trying to figure out what everything was and shaking the boxes and like, oh, this person only got me this, this person only got me too big, this one's a big present, that one only got me a small gift, and you let your whole party pass you by, that wouldn't be the best birthday. That wouldn't be very fun. And you might have some expectations about what's in those boxes that could be dashed when you open them. And I'm not saying that you, you're not going to get what you want. I'm saying enjoy the party and don't just focus on the presence. Because if you can't let go, if you're so wrapped up in what's in that wrapping paper, you are missing the whole party. And the present isn't going to be as sweet when it's compared to all the other things there and there's no level of emotional fulfillment or enjoyment in any of it. It's all about just the getting. The art of getting is enjoying the process, enjoying every piece of the process, leading up to the birthday, planning for it after the birthday, enjoying the toys and the memories and the leftover cake. So where is the line between letting go and detaching? versus obsessing and persisting. In my opinion, the line has to do with how do you feel about these affirmations or this persistence or this obsessive thinking? What are you feeling when you're affirming about it? And what is truly underneath this need to think about it or this obsession, this need to control it right from last week or this obsession over getting it or having it or the fact that it's not here. So for me, the answer really is in the way that you do the persisting. It's in the way that you do the affirming. Are you persisting through your manifestation and pushing through your doubts, pushing past your worries and your fears and your insecurities and saying, I know this is happening. I know that it's unfolding. I don't care how or when. I'm just glad to be here for the ride or something to that effect. Because that shows that you have belief in yourself, you have belief in the universe, you trust that the process is going to take you where you need it to go versus an obsessive repetition, affirmation, you know, type thinking where you're like, it's this, it's got to be 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 this. And if it's not this, I'm not going to be happy. It has to be this. It has to be this. It has to be this. It's not this. Why isn't it here? It's not this. It has to be this. It has to be this. And when you're affirming from that place, you're affirming from a place of lack. Affirming from a place of lack is only going to get you more lack when it comes back to the 3D reality. Your affirmations, the thoughts you think, the words you say are all selecting the realities that come to you. So if you're affirming that you have what you want from a place of fear, it's going to show back up in a way that scares you. So you have to learn to be okay with the now and be satisfied even though it's not here. Be okay at the party even without the presence yet. And that is the difference between detaching and obsessing, right? Like you can affirm and be detached from the need to have this, knowing that the love, fulfillment, abundant satisfaction is already within you. It just needs to be turned on and have a light shown on it. 
And then you can feel the way you think your manifestation is going to make you feel, but you can feel it right now without that thing coming to you. Or you're affirming and obsessing and not letting go because ultimately what you're really saying is deep down, you don't think that it's going to come about. You don't believe it. You don't believe in your abilities. You're not sure it's going to work. You don't know if the universe heard you yet, if the message was loud and clear, if the other person's feeling the vibes or not, if the universe has gotten the message. And the most important thing to notice here is that when you're obsessing and you're not letting go and you're fearing and you're worrying and you can't stop trying to make it happen, what's glaringly obvious to me as a coach is that you are letting your doubts overrule your affirmations. You're letting the fear and the worry be louder than the work that you're doing to put yourself into ease in the present moment. So meditation, shit that brings me joy, telling yourself you trust yourself, telling yourself you trust the universe, affirming that things always work out for you, even if they haven't. Because if you keep saying they haven't, or you keep saying it's not, or you keep saying you have to persist and persist and persist and persist and affirm and affirm and affirm and affirm, or it's not going to work, it's the, or it's not going to work part. That's the real issue. It's you not telling it it's going to work regardless. I don't have to obsess. I could not think about it all day and it'll still come about. And when I do think about it, I think about it in the right way. I think about it in a way that I actually like to see it come about, not in a way that screams, I'm desperate for this to happen or else I won't achieve happiness. Because that's what I'm really saying. And that's why I can't achieve happiness is because I keep telling the universe over and over, I'm not happy in some way, shape or form. And it is hearing you. And so for the love of God, I don't know how many other ways I can fucking say it. Just say that you're happy now. Just say you're fulfilled now. Just say that it's working out now. Just say it. Who cares if it's not real? Who cares if it's not here yet? If you agree that it's not here yet, it will never be here. It takes its cues from you. And if your message overall is it's not here yet, I got to do everything I can to make this happen because it's not happening without me freaking out. And oh my God, I have to get this now. I'm not going to be happy without it. That's what you get back. That energy is exhausting. It's painful, stressful. It's not certain. It's not sure. And you don't have to see certainty to use it. You don't have to know that you're sure to say that you are. And that's what I really, really just want everybody listening. Please listen to me. I'm not saying make yourself feel this way. I'm saying just fucking say you do. Start with the words because the words manifest. So if you can say I'm satisfied, when you want to obsess, I'm fulfilled. I have what I need now. I have everything I need now. Turn to that, turn to gratitude, turn to appreciation, turn from what I want to turn to have. Even if you don't have it, just turn the language, turn the attention away from the longing and the need and the absence, turn the attention toward having presence, abundance, even if it's fake. Nobody said you actually have to feel this. I'm saying stop saying that you don't. Stop letting the notion that it's not working or it's hard or you have to work hard or it doesn't work for people like you or who cares, it's been too long, it doesn't matter. Stop letting that stuff have the loudest voice or the last word. Let something else be your truth and then you will experience a different reality. If you're interested in having me help you pinpoint exactly what's going on within your language, your focus, your actions, your behaviors, anything going on with your manifestations, sign up for one-on-one coaching at my website, roxytalks.com. I've also got amazing courses and workshops you can get started on right away. And you can enjoy some meditations, affirmations, join your friends on the forum and get a manifestation buddy. And you can also check me out on social media and in our Facebook group, Black Moon Society. There's tons of ways to connect. Either way, I'm here for you. The community is here for you. You are there for you and you're learning how to be there for you more and more every single day. And I'm so proud of you for that. You got this. You can do it. I promise. I'm here with you every step of the way. We're all raising our vibrations together. You have the power. I believe in you.